and welcome back to another brand new video for you today and I'm here again to give you a little fun video even though that would insinuate my other videos are fun I don't know if they're fun I leave that up to you guys but um yeah I'm not <laughs> but anyway I thought in honor of the new Mission Impossible trailer that just came out and the reason I decided not to do a reaction on it is because I decided to do this instead because I didn't want to double over and make it you know too complicated and too much because um, I like to space out my videos but uh, and plus I don't have a routine schedule um, but anyway yeah so I'll just give you my overall quick impressions of the trailer that I saw that trailer was amazing what oh my god my goodness, I was excited for it already, but that trailer just made me pumped for it. Oh, and the fact that, oh man, they have kind of Henry Cavill as the kind of big bad or the antagonist during the movie. Um, I thought that was very interesting. My brother was telling me that, that he's like somehow gonna be like the bad guy, but I was like, Henry Cavill's the bad guy? What, where, where are you getting your source at? Um, <laughs> But uh, that was, I don't know if that was his opinion or that he read that somewhere, I'm not sure. But I was like skeptical and especially the previous two trailers we've had, you know, it didn't really insinuate that. So I was like, okay, he's probably just, I don't really know what his role in it. But you definitely know in this trailer who he is and what's going on. And I that totally blew me out of the water because I was surprised by that and I was shocked. Um, cause I love Henry Cavill. I wish he was in more stuff cause I like, I really love him as Superman and so, yeah. I was blown away, the trailer was amazing and awesome. And so, because of that, I thought I would give a quick top five, um, of my top, yeah, I can't say it, my top five list of my least favorite to favorite, um, Mission Impossible films. Why did I blank on that? It was weird. Um, Mission Impossible films. And yeah, this is gonna be kind of messy. I just got home from work, so um, when you're watching this, I don't know when you watch this, but anyway, yeah, I just got home from work, and uh, so this is like really spur of the moment stuff, and I don't really know what I'm gonna say, but um, yeah. So anyway, I thought, yeah, I'll, you yeah. know, yeah. I'll just give you my quick list, guys, and I'll go down the list and explain why this is my least favorite because I just watched um, like all of them. I've kind of been going on a binge watch because I've really been in the mood for Mission Impossible lately and uh, I binge watched all the ones that I really, really like. So um, all, all of them except the second one. I don't own the second one. So that, well, I don't really, I own two of them, but uh, the other ones I got off of Amazon and stuff like that. But anyway, you can probably see where this is going. Uh, but anyway, I'll just give you my number five is the second Mission Impossible film. I don't know what it's called, Mission Impossible something, but uh, the second one. I honestly, I think that's like the worst Mission Impossible film out of all the Mission Impossible films. I was just kind of underwhelmed with it. I thought it was kind of weird. I didn't really like the girl in it. I thought she was kind of strange. And especially the villain in it. I, I think it's kind of weird because the, I'm forgetting his name, the, the, the actor that played the bad guy in the second Mission Impossible film. He was in uh, Ever After. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Ever After, but it's like a, a telling of Cinderella, but kind of like with a twist. And I love that movie. It's one of my top 10 favorite movies of all time. So um, that movie I love and he does great in it. So uh, seeing him play this kind of strange character in uh, Mission Impossible 2, um, I thought was just a little, yeah, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was a good fit for him. Maybe it's because I, you know, I've seen how he is in previous, you know, other movies, and so, like, seeing him in that, I was, like, a little taken off, but, I mean, yeah. So, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, that is my number five, and that's why it's the least on my list because I just, you know, didn't really care for it that much. Um, but anyway, my number four would probably have to be, um, sorry, I guess if you were expecting like perfection, like a lot of these people out here who do movie reviews and stuff like that, very organized, very detailed, that ain't me and I'm sorry for it. And if you don't enjoy it, please tell me and I will try to be better about it. <laughs> but that's why I just wanted to give you a quick, you know, 
quick rabbit trail here real quick. I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm not organized and I'm not, you would think I would be because I have an office job. So you think I would be a little organized by that, but nope. I'm not a very organized person and I don't like containment and stuff like that. I don't know. <laughs> You would say it's just a video, but anyway, I am rabbit trailing a lot here, so I will get going with my other stuff. But anyway, number four would probably have to be, oh man, probably the first one, the very first Emotional Possible film. I, it's it's strange. I will when I first watched that for the first time when I was like, because my family watched it growing up, and I always thought it was kind of strange and weird. Like when the, the guy where, uh, the main guy, not the main guy, the, the bad guy in the film, he's like having that dream sequence and Ethan is having that dream sequence and uh, the guy with like, he's got blood all over his hands, he's like, Ethan, that always freaked me out when I was little and so I was like, why are you guys watching that? That is like messed up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I was, I thought it was really strange. But then I got a little bit older and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna watch that and I actually, I was like, that's pretty good. It's a pretty good movie. Um, I think it has some issues in it with it being a little boring for me. Um, but I still think it's pretty enjoyable. It's a pretty overall pretty good movie. Like, I would watch it again. Um, I watched it the other day um, just to kind of relive that and get it fresh in my mind. And, yeah, it's pretty good. Man, people were so young back then, too. That movie was made in 1996. I think that's what it said. That's the year that my brother was born, before I was born. So I'm like, yeah, that's like crazy just to see how, you know, how young everybody looked and especially Tom Cruise, he looked like a little kid. So, um, like an older kid, but uh, yeah. So, um, yeah, I personally, it's not my favorite film of the entire Mission Impossible franchise, but I think it's still pretty good. Um, so that's why it's at my number four. Uh, yeah. And then my number three would probably have to be, oh man, see this is hard because I really love this particular one, but I just saw, oh man, it's hard. I don't know. Um, oh dear. I guess I'll put, hmm. Okay. This is where I'll put it. My number three would probably have to be Rogue Nation, Mission Impossible Rogue Nation. Now, for a while, I did not like this film. When it first came out, I was really kind of like, I don't know why, I think it's because when Jeremy Renner was brought onto the cast, I was really excited for him, because I love Jeremy Renner and I think he's a great actor. And so I was really excited to see him um, be more of a main character. And he wasn't really in the Rogue Nation. He was kind of a side character. They kind of focused more on Ethan, the new girl, and, um, oh, what's his name? Um, what's the guy's name? The British guy's name. What was his name? Um, oh, goodness. Goodness me, I can't remember the British guy's name. Um, oh, man. Benji. That's his name. Benji. Yes. They kind of focus more on them, which is fine. I like Benji and everything, but uh, I was kind of hoping for more Jeremy Renner, but we didn't get that. Um, and so when I first saw it, I think that's why I was like disappointed because at the time I really only cared about Jeremy Renner. <laughs> um, so, I mean, I like Tom Cruise, but yeah, I just, that at the time I was like really into watching Jeremy Renner. And so, um, and then I watched it in its entirety without skipping, without, you know, cause I, little known fact about me guys I tend to skip through things when I get really bored um, and it bugs my family so much um, I wish I wasn't like that I guess it's just like when things don't interest me I'm just like you know skip through that because I don't want to watch something that doesn't interest me but uh, I watched it in its entirety and without thinking about you know Jeremy Renner and stuff like that I think because the second time I watched it I kind of knew going into it and I actually it's a pretty good movie. I, I'm like, I'm surprised. I'm like, wow. I went from not liking this movie at all to like thinking like this is actually really good. This is a really decent movie. Um, again, it's not my favorite out of the franchise, but I think and I, the trailers never really interest me when I first saw it. Like the trailers, um, they looked cool, but I wasn't like blown away by them or anything. Um, 
but when I watched it for the second time the other day, I was like, okay, yeah, I actually, that's pretty good. I really like that. So, and I like the theme of it, I like the pace of it, and so, and everybody's interactions were good. And I even liked the girl. Usually, with these kind of like action, you know, blow up, a big explosion, gunfight movies, um, I tend to never like the woman because she always seems very macho to me. They all, in whatever movie it is, it just always seems like they always have the girl be very masculine, and I don't like that at all. I just think it just, it's very distracting, and it just makes me not like them. Um, because I'm like, why are you acting like a dude? You know, you can be a boss, and you can, you know, you can be really cool without ha acting like, you know, like, yeah. Flip the hair and so I just, I personally, that's one of my biggest pet peeves in films. I just really do not like that. And so, um, yeah, I think that's why I like Wonder Woman so much is because it wasn't so, it wasn't so much of that. Um, so, yeah. So, and I, I liked her. I'll put it there. Yeah, I like, I thought she was good because they, she seemed to have more depth to her. Um, there were some scenes, you know, obviously that I didn't really care for, but, uh, overall, I liked her character and I thought she was really well acted and I thought she had great chemistry with Ethan Hunt even though I will always like um, I will always like the original OG Ethan Hunt and uh, his fiance or wife's name I forgot her name is it Kate? I don't think it's Kate is it? I can't remember but that leads right in to my number two which is Mission Impossible 3 I think it's, yeah, I think it's just Mission Impossible 3, right? Or am I missing something? I'm not sure. Um, but, yeah, wow. The double chin. I don't, are you guys, on film, I know you guys don't care about this, and I will try to stop bringing it up. I get distracted, because I'm like, I usually don't have this big of a double chin in real life. Um, so, when I see it on camera, I'm just like, what's going on? Uh, anyway, rabbit trail. Uh, so yeah, Mission Impossible 3. I remember when I first saw that movie, um, I think I was like, it was the year I got my Kindle Fire, or Kindle. It's the one that you can do multiple, it's like a little miniature version of an iPad. Um, but I got that for Christmas one year, and I had this like free month of like Amazon Prime. And Mission Impossible 3 was on there, so I was like, oh, I'm gonna watch that. And I was like maybe 15, 14 at the time, um, and I loved it. I was like, wow. This is a great movie, and I still love the movie. Um, I still think it's like great, all the chemistry that every character had with each other. I love the stakes, it was intense, especially towards the end, you're like, oh dear, is his fiance gonna die? What's gonna go, what's, what's gonna go down? I'm like nervous here. So you just felt like glued to the screen, at least for me, I felt glued to the screen and I felt very, you know, anxious during the whole entire film. So. That is why that is my number two. I love that film. It just doesn't quite make it to my number one film. Film, okay, what's going on? My number one pick, which is Mission Impossible, Ghost Protocol. That movie, I just, there's something about it that I just really like. And you may say, oh, it's because it has Jeremy Renner in it. Part of it. Um, but I just kind of, I don't know, it's like one of those just good action summer movies that I really like. Um, and who knows, maybe in a couple weeks I could switch the, you know, Mission Impossible 3 and Ghost Protocol around. I know, I love them both very much equally, but for some reason I just like the chemistry that Ethan Hunt had with um, Jeremy Renner, I forgot his name, Brant, I think something, something Brant. Um, I like them together and I liked really like how they were like telling this story with this new guy and especially having Benji in there too. Um, the girl was like really my only thing. <laughs> like I just went into, she was fine. I didn't really care for her very much, but I thought everyone's motivations throughout the whole film were great. It just had a lot of action and it was just very, very good, very solid movie. And especially the scene where, oh man. One of my biggest fears, guys, is heights, and so the scene where Ethan goes out on the Dubai building, the tallest building in the world, and like is climbing up it. I've like I watched that the other day, and I was like, oh dear, that just that just makes me cringe, just because I am so deathly afraid of heights. Like I get scared every time I have to like climb down a ladder, so. 
having that, seeing that on film, even though it's like through a screen, I still get like really anxious about it. And so um, that whole sequence and everything in the middle of the film, I thought was great and very, um, very exciting. And I just, yeah, I love that film. And uh, that's why it's my number one. And who knows when the sixth film comes out, you know, it could, that could be my number one. It could be num my number six. Um, hopefully it's not my number six because I really want to enjoy it and it has Henry Cavill in it. So, and I'm going to miss Jeremy Renner. Hopefully this isn't, that wasn't the last of him in, uh, Rogue Nation. I hope we see him again. I know he's not going to be in this new film, uh, which is really sad, uh, because I really liked his character and they just kind of dropped him. Which I've heard the reason that he's not in this film is because, uh, he had, uh, like schedule scheduling conflicts with uh, Avengers and then uh, Mission Impossible which is kind of weird because he wasn't in Avengers Infinity War at all so that's why I'm like hmm interesting but anyway that is my top five list of my favorite from least to favorite Mission Impossible films guys please let me know what your top five is down below if you've watched these films or haven't watched these films I'm sorry if you haven't you just got spoiled all over the place um but ho hopefully you have seen it. <laughs> um, and are you guys excited for the new film? I know I am. And I'm just pumped for it and can't wait. Uh, July needs to get here soon. Um, but yeah, so please leave a like on this video, guys. Please comment and please subscribe to my channel, especially if you're new. I love having new people and you guys are awesome. I love your support. And so you guys rock and I'll see you in the next video.